Today's video is about making carbon fiber parts from the material we've already laid up on a previous video. And we made precision templates. And I showed on the, actually it was yesterday's video, how to make them final templates so that you could get multiple parts at them as accurately as possible and not waste any carbon fiber material, whether you make it yourself or buy it. Now in the past week, we've tried to share some basic 101 useful information making carbon fiber sheet, making the patterns to cut parts, and today we're going to cut the parts out. And hopefully I've passed on some information you can use if you're new to carbon fiber, maybe even some people that are experienced, I don't know. I always like to pick stuff up from YouTube videos. I'm always, I, I, I watch a whole 20 minute video. If I only learn one thing, it's worth watching a video. Now, because of my experience with modeling for my whole life, I'm comfortable with the idea that to learn a new skill, I've got to find somebody to help me. In the case, Harold Price helping me learn how to paint. Other people, John DeTavio, but other people that have given me basic information and I've built on the information. Now, in the case of the MT-09, here's my goal is I didn't want to go buy a bunch of parts off the internet and just bolt them on a bike like you would decorate a Christmas tree. I wanted to be involved in making some of the things. Not only making them, I wanted to design some of them. And John Pothier, of course, with his computer skills and Photoshop skills, has been a giant asset. Now, and I'm going to explain some of the things we're going to try to do in the next few months with the ability to look at them on computer first before we actually cut things out. Now, I always say motorcycling is like a buffet. You can go to the motorcycle dealer if you want. You can get the bike of your choice. You can get bikes that go 200 miles an hour as <laughs> soon as you pick them up and pay for the insurance. You can buy comfortable touring bikes like the GS that I've got 73,000 miles on it now. And it is just as comfortable today as the day I bought it new in 1982. You can buy bikes like any of the old two-strokes, Luciano's H1 or my RD, that are just a blast to ride and go through the gears. There's really something for everybody. The problem is you got to pick out what it is you enjoy. So I remember, and this is a short story, my uh, fellow modeler, Les McDonald, got an FZ09 and was sending me pictures every day. He modified it and he did all kinds of things, the forks, the shocks, whatever. And... He had ridden two strokes in the past, so I was real interested to see what he was doing. So just to refresh everybody's memory, two summers ago, one summer ago, I was riding the FZR. It got about three miles from my house on the middle of a bridge, and the fuel pump went. Luciano and Karen came with the rescue truck, and when Karen <laughs> saw how sweaty I was and uh, figured I might have a heart attack out waiting for Luciano to get there, she said, why don't you just go, your birthday's in three days, and go buy a new bike. Well, she had no trouble convincing me. Luciano and I went to Motorcycle Mall. They didn't have a blue one. They only had the other colors, which I didn't care for. So I wound up getting it down in South Jersey, and I was glad I did because I loved the blue color. And it would be another blank canvas for me to do my customizing stuff on, but I wanted to ride it for a year and make sure it was the bike that I really was going to be happy with before I sink all this time and energy into it. And it is. So not a really good analogy, but it's like marrying the girl of your dreams. You want to make sure it's not just about uh, that first kiss. You want to make sure she's going to be able to make cookies too. And this bike makes cookies. And I'm sure there are a lot of people with faster bikes, bigger engines, more power, something that may, it floats their boat. But I have to tell you, this bike floats my boat, and it is worth for me. I've made several carbon fiber parts already for it, and Vlad has gotten me some, and they're really good. Thank you, Vlad. And there's things among the styling that I don't care for. For instance, I don't like this lettering. The stickers on here, well, we're going to come up. This is going to eventually be painted blue. We're going to come up with our own logo, and I've said before, once you know you're in love with the bike, then it pays to make the changes. Before you know you're in love, if you just ride a bike around a block, I don't want to spend 500 hours until I've ridden it for a year. So it's a good timing because my son is here from Denver for one more day. No, two more days. Well, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get rid of you, son. But, well, he's been enjoying watching the progress I've made with the bike. He, of course, rides dirt bikes, so he has a little appreciation of what I'm doing. So I have had the bike a little over a year and three months. 
we have put a carbon fender. We've replaced the front tire at 6,000 miles. We made custom bracketing for the windshield. The windshield's laid back. We also have another windshield coming from China, which I'm going to paint blue. The, John is aggressively working on new logos for the side, that, and we'll explain that when we do the logos, why and how. I put frame plugs in, which I couldn't find on the internet. I had to uh, resolve just coming up with my own solution. That's on a previous video. Made the carbon fiber plate. I made for the Graves the, that this is. This is a Graves tail tidy. And, and the ones that were on YouTube already had left out some steps. The one I posted, I hope I didn't leave out any steps. Not criticizing anybody, but when you do that kind of video, you can't leave out the fact you got to cut a couple of the parts. Anyway, not beside the point. We polished up the exhaust, polished up the wheels, and I'm really starting to feel like it's my bike. I got some Dennis to mix me some custom paint for some of the parts that worked out great. I didn't like anything flat. I don't like flat paint. I like everything shiny. So I'm, I'm well along in the road to make this bike my own. Now, yesterday and on yesterday's video, we post up something every day. I made a very accurate pattern. I have made the carbon fiber, the flat sheet, on a previous video. I ordered the magnets from Amazon. I ordered 100 little baby magnets. I think I can use them for other things like maybe this backside cover. Not sure. But they're cheap enough. And they're really powerful magnets too, by the way. And so this today's the objective of today is I want to make two pieces from carbon fiber with the good side of the carbon showing out, of course. And then when I get the magnets, I can install that, see if I like it. But I always like to be able to evil twin out a bike. So what I want to be able to do is just take those off and put on some that are blue. So I'm going to cut, I have a piece of sheet carbon that's not, it does not have the weave in it. And I'll make two of those and paint them blue to match. And then I can sit here and with, <laughs> just take it off and put it on. Don't even need a tool. And John, as I said, John is working on, we have a lot of choices of logo. Here's the problem in a nutshell with the logo. I don't like this. This to me looks like, uh, well, not, not for me, but look at how nice it looks on the other side. This is what makes me crazy. The other side, where it comes to a point right at the bottom here, that looks like it belongs. Well, we've looked at several choices so far. I put some up on the computer, but it's just like having a windshield laid back. It's a small detail, and if it's wrong, it's wrong for <laughs> forever. Oh, this logo more than the other one. We are going to work on something. We're aggressively working on it. I get, I get pictures sometimes more than once a day. Anyway, and again, thank you, John. So the last thing, if you're new to the channel, the restoration of this bike is on the, it's a 900-hour restoration. A lot of the work, like the, the restoration of this bike was a 500-hour restoration. That's all out on the channel. The GS, we did an awful lot of work. In fact, last, last year we did the, the black wheels on this. That's on there. The engine polishing video, I think, has over a million hits already. The, there's just, these, this is the passion I have for motorcycling, is to take a relatively, this is a good example, a relatively vanilla, plain Jane, low-end bike, not, not a uh, million-dollar bike, take that and turn it into something that I'm really proud of. And all of these bikes, and especially the, the pride of my fleet, the RD, the one that makes me crazy. The RD is like the girlfriend you have when you're already married. I've laughed with Carl about it. I said, do we have a love-hate relationship with our two-strokes? <laughs> Mostly hate, though. <laughs> this bike can make you crazy, but when you're out riding it and going through the gears, it's like being 18 again. Anyway, time to get down to the shop and get some work done. So these are the carbon fiber sheets that we made in real time on previous video. Just to show what we're doing, we have a good side and a side that we're not going to see. The finish on it came out pretty nice. We have the magnets that I had to cut down in diameter, but I, I've ordered a whole set of 100 magnets that are all different diameters. And they are, these are really powerful magnets. I always love doing this. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But anyway, I put some blue tape because I want to capture the grain on that, that edge. So I put some blue tape, and the next thing is what I'm going to try to do, and I'm going to try to do it real carefully, is get an, this I spent the whole workday getting an accurate pattern. Get that marked off with a razor-sharp pen, 
And then I have some of the material that's, this is just solid carbon fiber that, that does not have the weave in it. And this I'll be able to paint blue. I should be able to get two pieces out of that. But I've got to get a new blade and a saw. Carbon fiber is rough on blades. So the first thing I want to do, and again, this is why I made a very accurate hard pattern, not a paper pattern. And I spent a lot of time getting this just right. Because now I'm going to try to take the saw on a slow speed and get this cut and just leave on the line. If, I, if I'm real accurate, I can just leave on the line. I've got to do it with a slow saw speed, and I'll put it in fast forward because it'll take me a long time to get through this part going slowly. If you try to rush it on a fast, slow speed, the thing just goes crazy on you. And by having that line on there, if, if I'm a little bit short or a blade wanders a little bit, which they sometimes tend to do in carbon fiber, I can just block sand it right right back to another one. When I'm all done, I want to have a very accurate carbon fiber piece. That's the, the whole objective of the video is not to have a paper pattern, have a wood pattern, aluminum, or something solid, and have it accurate. Once it's accurate and you know it's right, because now I don't want to cut up, two, up, two, up, two, up, up. I want to do it once, and that's it. Now, when I make the other side, once I'm done with this side, I've got to flip this. But I still want to maintain the grain, and I need to put a hole in this in the piece on the other side for the shock. I need to be accurate. I want the hole up here if I need to be able to get the screwdriver in to adjust the shock. So I always think there's part one, you've got to have a, a mind's eye view of what you want to make. Number two, you've got to be able to either make it or buy it. In my case, I like to make it. And then you're the thing of, there's a learning curve for every kind of material you use, whether it's wood or aluminum or welding or uh, painting or buffing or whatever. There's, there's a million skills that come into if you're going to make your own custom motorcycle parts. Now you can see I've tried, and you can see the saw does not exactly follow that, even with a brand new sharp blade. So the last little bit, I go over to the belt sander and just get that right up to, and still leaving on the line, but getting that nice and smooth. And then we'll go do a test fit. And by far, the belt sander is the best way to fine-tune that edge and make a, as good of a precision fit as you can. Okay, now if you look real close, we just got the edge of the tape peeling up, but we are right on that pen line. And because this was pretty accurate, well, yeah, just to show you how confident I am, I'm going to take a sanding block out with me in case I have to dress this off a little bit in any direction. And the whole secret is to work from an accurate pattern that's hard, not a piece of paper, and, and never settle for something that doesn't fit and you're happy with it. I have these magnets that I modified yesterday, just ground some off so that they would fit. And these are really powerful magnets. I'm always amazed at that. Okay, so we have this piece. The pattern was very accurate. Let's see if our cutting job worked out pretty well. I'm going to find out in a minute. And you know what, I can tell, I, this is the first time I've seen it with blue tape on it. Even the blue tape, even though that doesn't match. Hey, who put a stain on my bike? Who, even though that doesn't match, I'm going to make another piece from the carbon. And what that, what that piece is going to do, I'm going to paint it to match the blue. So I'll always have, and, and everybody knows I love to evil twin out the bikes. I like to be able to just go, oh, let's see how it would look like that, like that very very easily and conveniently and while I'm cutting carbon today I may as well cut out all the parts because I can't do a permanent mount until I get the magnets. Now I've always counted that that's one of the parts of the bike I really wanted to customize to make my own and I th to be honest I think the little bit of blue in there is going to look nice but I want to have both of course and I always want to be able to do this is just take it snap snap once I glue this to the magnets that'll be pretty cut and dry. Well, if you see what I mean, to me, that's not an attractive part of the bike. I'd like to cover that up. I hope this is going to be when I'm all done. I'll have two choices, the, carb the real carbon fiber and that the part that's blue. 
And then it's evil to end time anytime I want. And even when the part is carbon fiber, I think it looks better then, but I think the blue is going to look the nicest. Well, I guess we're going to find out. We're going to find out very soon. But anyway, that part worked out pretty good, but from this point on, I need to have the magnets. I always like to look at it from several different angles, and if it wasn't raining outside, I could look at it from several different points of view. I also did a quick test fit to make sure these parts were symmetrical. But when I, when I cut the other one, of course, what I have to do is cut it from the other side so that this is the good side, and then I have to spot that hole. So that'll be the next thing is to lay this out in reverse. I know this part now can be my pattern, and it'll be exactly the same. And then the final thing is going to be to figure out where that hole has to be drilled. And we'll be ready to, as soon as our magnets come in, be ready to put these in. And I can make those other pieces up if I have enough time today. Now this is a lot like tool and die making that is never an end to the amount of little tweaks you want to make to the part. And in this case, I really want this to be perfect. This part, in fact, I'm, I think what I'm going to do is clear coat it because the edges are dull and it doesn't, it doesn't look good to me. I'd rather them be shiny. We're going to see those edges. And I'm going to mix clear for the blue anyway, so I may as well go all the way here. But it's an endless amount of little tweaks and in the end they are worth it. And I'm positive of that. Even though, and this is, boy this reminds me of building some model planes where you just had to have patience and in the end, you won. Oh, that really, I, I'm real happy the way that looks. That really played, that really changes to me. I, I can't, the magnets aren't holding it yet. That changes the look of a motorcycle, whether it's blue or carbon fiber, or even when I cut the other piece, it'll be kind of this flat black. You can look at it in a lot of different ways. And, and being able to evil twin it is the best of all worlds. Now to do the other side, I have to put it up on a stand so I can see how, once I cut that part, I have to look and make sure it fits perfectly and then I have to, most important thing, spot that hole to adjust the shock. So the next thing is to go cut the other part from using the other side for a pattern, reversed. Now one thing I learned from this whole experimental thing is I put these bolt covers on using uh, that glue gun, and I thought they would fall off or be a problem. Boy, when they go on, they are on. I'm really surprised how strong that glue is. Now I can put the magnets on. I, I can't even get them apart. These things, neodyne magnets, they're so powerful. Ridiculous, anyway. Okay. And we're ready to go cut that other part up. Now this is always the time that I have to remind myself, don't make two left pieces or two right pieces. Either way, either way, it's a problem. So what I want to do, and again, since now I know I'm going to have to put a, a clear finish on this, I wasn't sure if I would, because that edge is a problem. It, it acts like a little picture frame. Once this, I'll put a couple of coats of clear. I'm going to have to do the blue anyway, so I may as well just resolve myself to that. But how many times have I done this and made another part exactly the same? <laughs> Well, don't do that. Now, I want to pick up, I actually ought to do it this way. I want to pick up the, I think I'll be able to do this. It'll waste a little more material, but I've got plenty of material. I don't want that to be up there. And that there. Okay. So, now again, this is the reason I'm using this. This part has been, mas I'll call it massaged, for lack of a better word. And I already took this part and put it in the other side. And by the way, if I'm committed to this idea of using magnets, I don't need to drill that hole. I can just take the part out, reach in and take it out. But to adjust the shock. But I'm not committed to it yet. I'm not going to drill a hole. In fact, I'm just going to cut this out and then see if I can get it. Make sure the fit is perfect. The whole thing with a job like this is just being patient and fussy. Now, I remember 30 years ago when I started making carbon fiber model airplane parts and Dave Midgley was working along with me and we were trying to make wing molds and propeller molds and everything. It was like pulling teeth to try to get anybody to tell you how to do it. 
or will tell you where to buy the supplies or anything. And thankfully, thankfully to YouTube, pretty much anything you want to know about carbon fiber is already out on air and by multiple experienced people. Now you might have noticed by this time this this the blade is already get starting to get dull and it, you get these wiggles but that's why we leave that last little bit of material and do the final fit with the belt sander and that is good a very good tip what happens if you use the high speed setting the blade doesn't cut through it burns through and you wind up the life of the blade gets cut to nothing I hope I've been able to pass on some tips of how you can get these fits to be precision and accurate. Now we can peel the blue off and we'll go out to the garage and make a, a real accurate test fit. And again, I don't really have to drill that hole because I am kind of committed to these magnets. But if I were to put this on permanently with screws or bolts or something, I'd have to drill that hole to get into the shock. Which is probably the reason they, they designed this frame around that. I don't know. And I'm very careful not to change anything on the bike that's going to make it anything less than the great fun that an MT-09 really is. Now, I never take for granted until I actually have the part in-house that it's going to fit the way I want. Yeah, that's going to be really nice. That is really going to be... And you think it's a small detail that that edge now that I've sanded to fit, that edge, you would think, ah, nobody will see that. Once it's clear, it'll be so much nicer. So the last thing I can do today is get a coat of clear on this, I guess. Yeah, that's nice. And it fits right up solid with the magnets. Ah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. Now here's a little way to check it out. This is before... And check this out. After, well, it's a little now to behold her, but that, that works for me. Well, after a quick before and after, I think this is going to be well worth the time we put into it. And it's time to put a nice clear finish on this. Maybe I'll even have time to get a coat of clear on this today. Now it looks like we're going to have enough time to put the finish on. And it did stop raining, so well, I, I need to sand this down with some 400 get it, and get the edges all totally smooth. Make a little uh, piece of tape or something to hold it from the back. And we'll get a coat of clear on there today. But it's, see, the only reason we need to clear is that edge. But without that edge, that's one of the small details that really, really matters. And you don't notice it. It's like if you look at a beautiful woman and she, oh, she smiles and the one tooth is missing in the front. It's a problem. That's the tooth. And there's just no end to the little details you can do or the little things you can upgrade on a motorcycle especially if you have some passion and you really want to get it done. Now, step one before you do anything, a part that's come out of PVA, a lot of times there's little molecules of PVA or some kind of any release agent, wax, whatever. We want to get some, this is simple green, of course. Crud cutter, the stuff that uh, we have used that, same thing, but we just have, happen to have a gallon of this. The crud cutter works good. That's available at Lowe's, by the way. That was a little tip from our friend Dallas, and it worked good. And by the way, it works really good on a shower, too. <laughs> so the first thing, before I do any sanding or anything, I'll sand with 400. I want that part perfectly clear. The, the cleaner I can make it, the less chance I'll have of having defects in the finish. And 400 sandpaper is always the first choice on a job like this. I don't want to go down into the cloth, but I know there's enough of a resin on there. And when I put the clear on, it'll go right around the edge, and you'll see that little, when you look at it from far away, you'll see that little light running around the edge. It'll really be like the cherry on a Sunday. And the 400 sandpaper will give it just enough tooth to get a good bite. Anything uh, rougher than that could be a problem, and I'll be scratches, you see. All right, I just need to have a way of holding this up off the paper ever so slightly. And we'll prep it all up with some M600. And we'll be ready to spray. Now, it's been raining all day, so I'm glad to have, I didn't expect to have a uh, break in the rain like this. But we'll take it. Yeah, that'll be fine. Just, just got to be up off the paper. Now, this is the clear we're going to use. We're going to try to give it two coats, about a half an hour apart, assuming it doesn't rain anymore.
Okay, that's going to have to sit in the garage overnight. And probably tomorrow we'll hit the whole thing with 400 sandpaper again. Put another coat of clear on just to give it that really nice flat look. And the main reason for doing this is just to get the edges so we don't see a dull edge. Or like a little picture frame around the part, which I didn't find attractive. Okay, it's okay. time to tell the truth. He comes out here. He wants to say, well, you want a wet sand for me tonight? But no, he's going out the party. Right. Let's have the truth. Yeah, the truth is, hey, can I borrow the, one of the yellow ones? Which Which bike you want to ride next? That guy. Well, you're going to take them all, see? This guy. Lucky for me, it's been raining all week, so uh, all my bikes are so far safe. This yellow So far. One, uh, this you take them all. Listen, there's going to be a day when you got to decide which ones you want to keep and which ones you sell a Luciano for half price. I, I, don't, think, <laughs> I don't think that's happening. Right. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> We never know. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? Yeah. You head out to see Miles? Yeah. Head over right. there now. Like I said, just, I just wanted to take a... Yeah, I know what you want to do. Yeah, yeah, I know what you want to no, do. I wasn't, I wasn't going to sneak You want to see the girls. Yeah. yeah. Sneak out I come out to the garage and hey. two bikes will be missing. I mean, exactly. Right. <laughs> uh, so Craig still has one, two, two more days here, but we've had a lot of fun during his visit. He's going out to see Miles tonight and the puppy. Well, I had no idea when this day started how it was going to play out. It actually played out pretty good. We got the first two parts, some base clear on it. We'll see in the morning if there's any imperfections, fish eyes, whatever. And we're going to put more clear on because I want those two little parts to be very defining of the motorcycle. And, of course, if you weren't that fussy, you could just leave this finish on and probably nobody would even notice. But I want it even better if I can make it that way. Then I also have to make the two pieces add it and paint them blue and then I still need to get the magnets they're ordered but no one Amazon they'll be here tomorrow morning I don't know we'll find out anyway we're having a wonderful visit with Craig we're really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying to work on this MT-09 I, because I know when I'm done I already have ridden a bike for a year and I know it's one of the bikes I truly truly enjoy riding and there's just something about it I don't know what it is I've tried to share it with my friends but they all poo poo me it, it's okay it's okay. It's, <laughs> if I discover the fountain of youth, you'll poo-poo me too, and I'll be young and you won't be. Well, believe me, I am still looking for that fountain of youth, and uh, if I do find it, I'll, I'll be the richest guy on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, we, we tried over the course of the day to share what I think is some good information from making patterns, making carbon fiber parts, actually the last few days we've been sharing all the information basic from ha buying some carbon fiber cloth and resin to having a finished pipe part on your motorcycle and it's up to you to design it, engineer it, figure it out what it, you want it to look like and that's a part of motorcycling that I enjoy. Not everybody does. Some people prefer other aspects of it, long distance touring, trials bikes, uh, hill climbing bikes. That's a part of it I enjoy. Is making a bike personalized to be my own, set it apart in a crowd, and it's just something that I enjoy. Hard to explain to people that don't understand it. Anyway, I have a beautiful, humble bike collection I've worked on for the last 60 years. Finally got something that, uh, well, that people seem to enjoy watching on YouTube. I hope you'll want them. I do try to post up every day. I do try to share the things I've learned the hard way. So if you enjoyed the video, I hope you share it with your friends. And of course, I hope, most of all, that we'll see you tomorrow. And thanks again for watching.